place in my memory and my thoughts. It says if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a three cold, threefold cord is not quickly broken. The Bible tells us that we are our brother's keeper. We are to be our brother's keeper. Right. The Bible tells us that we are to strengthen each other. Right. Amen. But where does the threefold cord come in? You and your brother, or your sister, however you want to phrase that. The third is the Lord. If you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fiery furnace, and the king looked in and said, I see a fourth man walking in the fire. That's right. It wasn't alone. When you stand up and hold up and edify and strengthen your brother or sister, Jesus is going to be there. Amen. You just went from strong to indestructible. Unbeatable. Amen. That's right. Hello. That's right. Proverbs 27, verse number 17, where the Lord says, Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Yeah. Iron sharpeneth iron. If you're trying to do it by yourself, you can rub a knife in the middle of all you want to and it'll never get sharp. It's going to take something just as it's the same. Mm. There you go. Got to be matched, amen. It's got to be something that's just as hard, just as tough, just as durable as it is. Yeah, that's right. Iron can't be sharpened against something soft. Iron can't be sharpened against something that cannot make it sharper and, and put some grit or some, some tension against it. Amen? That's, right, That's why the people of this world cannot sharpen your iron. That's right. It's going to take a child of God. Amen. 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 If you need strength this morning, he's here. If you need deliverance, he's here. That's right. Amen. We got a whole lot of iron sitting right here ready to help you get your sharpening on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Genesis 2.18, the Lord said, It is not good for man to be alone. Now there we know he was fixing to create Eve for man. But if you will read that verse a little bit, uh, a little bit more carefully, Genesis 2.18 and the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. Yeah. I will make him a what? A help meet for him. <clears throat> we first of all we think, hey, that right there means he's gonna make him a wife. But let me tell you something. He said, make him a help meet. She was no benefit to him unless she was like him. That's right. She was so much like him, she came from him. That's right. Coming from the real, yeah. What was he doing? He said, I'm going to build my church. Amen. Hello. Right. He made his sister. He made his brother. He made his church member. That's right. That's right. He said, you need help in your walk. That's right. That's right. No. Yep. Amen. Amen. That's truth. And then Eve said, but when I fall, <laughs> yeah. I shall arrive. Amen. And a little later, he stayed with her. He kept on. Amen. It's that way in the church. That's right. I'm going to tell you, the sadness of solitude is real. I love my wife. Me and her have a great marriage, great relationship, we're best friends, everything. But here 
here's the thing. I have been at conferences. I have been in church meetings where there was two and three hundred people in that building. And I was as long, I was lost as a duck in a hailstorm. Uh-huh. I was alone. I felt like I didn't belong there. I felt like nobody wanted me to be there. Right. I asked God, why am I in here? Yeah. Oh, what are you talking about, Pastor? Surely you don't have that problem. Oh, yeah, I've had a bunch of times. That's right. Yeah. Be standing there with a lot of people and feel like I'm just totally on an island, isolated by myself. Mm -hmm. Yep. My wife's sitting out there beside me. And I tell her, so I just don't even feel like I'm supposed to even be here. But you know what she'd do? She'd look at me and she said, yeah, you are. She said, I know what you're feeling. You know what she's doing, Sister Gunther? She's being that help that the Lord made her for me. That's right. She's being that help. She's saying, no, I'm not going to let you come. I'm fixing to sharpen up the teeth. Amen. I could be feeling something. I've had Brother Thomas has called me before. Just out of the blue. And speak a word of encouragement to me. At a time when I need it. Yep. Hello? Yep. That's what the Lord has designed his church to do. We're not alone. No. We're not alone in this. That's right. Our brothers, our sisters. Amen. That's right. It's not to say it's, it's not about marriage. But if you ever felt alone, yeah. even when you had Sister Guthrie right there with you. Oh, yeah. It happened. Right. And sometimes your wife or your, your, your husband or whatever can't console it. Sometimes they can't help it. That's right. That's right. And praise God, Sister Martha, you had to come to church to get your iron sharpened because you couldn't get him home because your husband was living in the world. That's right. She was married, but she was alone. Without her church, she stood alone. Her sister Russian, too. I can put that, that quite a bit. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. But you get your strength when you come around God's people. That's where your strength comes back. That's where you get the strength to go on another day. Yeah, but that can't happen to everybody. Let me tell you something. You look back at John the Baptist. I know I've used this example once, but it's true. Just share John the Baptist knew who Jesus was because they baptized him. But they put that man of God in prison. He sat there for a little while and he said, Go ask Jesus if he's the Messiah. He said, before when he seen him coming to baptize him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. In other words, he said, Look, here comes the Messiah. Amen. But he was only for a little while. And he began to become confused. The devil had a little time to work on him. He hadn't been around where he could get any iron sharpened. That's right, that's right. He was hearing about what was happening, Brother Dakota, but he wasn't there. That's right. He was separated. That's right. Matthew 18 tells us exactly what we should be doing. Matthew 18, verse number 19. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you 
shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Where two or three. Where my children come together. That's where I'm going to be at. That's why he's here this morning. Because we come together, we're singing praise unto him. Amen. We're lifting his name up. We're lifting our voices and adoring him. Yes, that's right. He's going to show up in that environment. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He's going to show up in that situation. Jesus told the disciples, when he went to send them out, he didn't say, all right, y'all go out. There's 12 of you. That's 12 different directions y'all can go. He said, no, y'all go out by twos. Right. Amen. He said, this is a job you can't do alone. That's right. You're going to have to go out by twos. Because to be able to handle it, it's going to take two of you. That's right. Because one of you might fall. One of you might have a problem. But if you got your other one there, he can pick you back up and y'all can keep on going. That's right. That's why the Bible says from Satan, not the assembly of yourselves together. Even the much more as you see in that approach. Because you're going to need them now more than ever. You're going to need the church. You're going to need the strength. More than you've ever needed. Right. Look around here. Your strength is sitting right next to you. Amen. Your strength is sitting in the house with you today. Amen. It's not in the world. Amen. That's right. Always up the cold. The old, old this world. Dwayne Johnson. The rock. He's a big old boy. He's a hawk. So is Shaquille O'Neal. That big old boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But all their strength, all their power, can't help you in your walk with the Lord. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. They can't help you. I wish we could help them. The demoniac in the Isle of the Gatherings. We find out that he lived in the tombs, the place of the dead, place that was cursed. Why? Because he has isolated himself. Because no doubt those devils had tortured him. And he had went away from other people. They had tried to bind him. The Bible said that they could not tame him. You tame a dog, you don't tame a human. A human. Amen. But they had tried to tame him. They had tried to, to bind him and fed him. They had tried to keep him from isolating himself, I'm sure. Yep. 10,000 devils couldn't stop him. <coughs> but why did he run to Jesus? Because he said, there is what I need to be able to get this cut off of me. Uh -huh. That's right. He is my way of escape. He is my deliverance. Amen. He is. Right. Amen. Yes, sir, brother. He is. Exactly. You know, if you look into that and think about it, I'm sure that demoniac was paranoid. 
You ever get a little paranoid when you start feeling alone? Mm -hmm. Nobody there likes me anymore. Uh -huh. They didn't even shake my hand. Right. Go ahead. Preach. They didn't tell me how, how good they thought my clothes looked and how pretty my hair was. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hello? I just don't plan I'm gonna go back over there no more. They don't want me there anyway. Anybody in here wanna tell a story this morning and tell me you ain't never felt that at least once in your Christian walk? You're bad wrong. Right. It's said every one of us at one point in time. It's all of us. That's the trick of our adversary. Our adversary wants us to be distracted so that we can start striking out at those who can help. Sure, if we didn't care, we would try to pray people through the Holy Ghost. That's right. We would try to pray with them or encourage them or, or you know, just give them a handshake or a hug or a, you know, or, or, or a word that they need. That's right. That's right. I'm glad it's not just our four no more. We reach out to everybody. We love every person that walks into these doors. Right. We want every person that comes in here to hear the word of God, to receive the, the repentance, yep. to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, yep. and to re receive baptism in Jesus' name. Yep. We want them to have the plan of salvation. We want them to be a bought or a sold out Brother, a sold out individual for God. <coughs> we are a brother's keeper. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. I saw something the other day. This verse just came back to me. I didn't have no notes on this. Praise the Lord. I ain't really got much notes anyway. Y'all know me. Glory. Y'all know Sister was Ferez Ferez and started with an E another one. And then David's lineage. Them two were illegitimate sons. 
They were illegitimate sons. I cannot remember their father's name right now off, off the top of my head. But did you realize that if you were illegitimate, that you couldn't enter the house of God for ten generations? Wow. For ten generations, you were not allowed to go into the house of God. Do you know that David, King David, was the tenth generation from those illegitimate ancestors? Wow. And Psalm 122, he says, Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. He was happy all right because he was the end of the curse. Yeah. Amen. He finally was able to be able to walk into the house of the Lord. Amen. That's right. But he didn't say I'm glad when they said to me. He said I'm glad when they said to us. Let us go. Let us go. Let us let us let huh? Come on. Let us go. That's it. Into the house of the Lord. <laughs> let us go into the presence of God. Let us be redeemed. Let us praise the Lord. Amen. That's right. Go ahead. Yeah. It's not. It's not set up for it to just be. Me. He set it up for us to be for each other. Sure. Iron. Sharpen. Iron. Amen. Go out by twos. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to go back over to Ecclesiastes. Something's calling me back a little bit. Let's see what we got. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. For he hath not another to help him up. You need a story for that? Look at the apostles. That's right. There was twelve. But one singled himself out. Yeah. One back. singled himself out of that twelve. Judas said, I'm more interested in the money. And Sister Doris, he went after that money. And he lost his own soul. soul. Once he figured out, Sister Brenda, that he had messed up, there was no turning back. That's right. Judas had already went too far. He said, well, I'll just give the money back. And didn't do it. What he should have done is when he got that first fleeting thought was to do what the Bible says. It says con con confess your sins one to, another. one to another. He should have went over there and said, hey, Matthew. Hey, John, come here. Man, I've got something devil in my mind. I've got something that's bothering. Can I talk to you? Yeah, man, what is it? This, this is bothering me. It's got me tore up. Oh, we'll pray. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. We'll get you back, man. We'll watch you. We'll make sure that you don't do anything. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Jesus could have been saved had he just leaned on his brother. That's right. 
That's the truth. That's why it says confess your sins to one another. It's not saying go ahead and tell everybody your stuff before they can go gossip about you. That's right. It's saying confess your sins one to another. Hello? Mm -hmm. So that you can get victory over it, so you can have some help to come against it. Because if one can send a thousand to fly, two are going to send ten thousand. First Thessalonians chapter number five, verse number eleven says, Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. In other words, come together, comfort each other. And edify or to build up and strengthen one another as you're already doing. That's right. Do you know how it comes to the point where people will take their own life? Yeah. You know how they get there? Most of the time it's because they have become depressed. They have become in a state of loneliness. Yeah. They feel like nobody cares. I can't uh, talk to nobody. Yeah. Hello? Yep, that's right. Yes, sir. They get to the point. That's right. You get to the point where they feel like there's just nowhere for me to turn. That's right. Nothing else I can do. That is a hopeless state to be in. We don't have to be there. You're my brother, you're my sister. Take me by the hand. Huh? You don't have to be alone, sister. You don't have to be alone. We've got brothers and sisters that probably walked in that space that you're in. At some point in their life, they've probably already been there. Done that. They may have a, they may not have been there, but they may have a word for you from the Lord. Yeah. Solitude is a very sad thing. That's right. That's true. The Lord said it's not good for man to be alone. You know, they said for you, they said that the, the out of mind is the devil's workshop. Yes, it That's is. exactly right. You get by yourself and you start thinking, woulda, coulda, shoulda. You start thinking, oh, woe is me. Yeah. You start thinking about nobody loves me, nobody cares. You get that same philosophy that I lay ahead. Yeah. I mean, the last one, so. They're light to the head. I'm the only one left. There's no one beside me. I'm all alone. I ain't got nobody. So you're going to hide in a cave? Watch hiding in caves. You'll end up being a grave if you're not careful. Everything. 
Dr. Google don't know near as much as what he thinks he does. That's right. And he don't know nothing about the spirit world. That's right. He don't know nothing about living to the Lord and trusting the Lord. He don't know nothing about the love that brothers and sisters got for each other. That's right. Not a flesh of brothers and sisters, but the brothers and sisters of God. That's right. Let's see. I will, I have to say this. Whenever you just, you just can't compare, or you just can't compare yourself with just anybody. Mm -hmm. You've got to pray and ask God for that person because whether it be a man, a woman, it don't matter. Because there's not everybody's going to walk the same way you're going to walk. That's right. They're not going to look at the situation the same as you do. I went through a very bad time in my life, and I didn't have a body. And I earnestly prayed. I said, God, you got to direct my feet. you got to show me where I need to go because I said, I just cannot stand and do this long no more. Mm -hmm. And that's when God directed me here. I've got more friends now than I've had in a long time. Folks actually help me. Yeah. But it's that I come to a point that I come to desperation in my time. I said, but you got to be willing to want help too at the same time. Yeah. And you just think that you can do this by yourself and that it's not going to happen. No. And you're, you're going to fall. You're going to, and the mighty is a fall like the man that built his house upon him sand. Mm -hmm. And whenever the storms came and they fell, the mm -hmm. mighty was a fall of the house. He was leaning on something, something that had no structure. Structure to it. So. You know, even the car in the corner world know it for years. That old song back years ago, Brother Tom. What's that? The loneliest number is the number one. <laughs> you know that old song? <laughs> yeah. That was back, I think that was the 60s or so song there. I mean, that's been back years ago. Even the world <laughs> number. The loneliest number is the number one. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that one, but okay. Yeah. If it's there, it's there. I believe you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it, yeah. And to ask for help, you have to crush your pride. And a lot of times, that's why God will put you in a place to ask for help. That's it, right? He will. He will. That's the truth. Hallelujah. The sadness was solitude. How many have lost their walk with the Lord just because they chose to be alone? That's right. Right. Well, I could go on a lot right there. <laughs> Personal stuff, I could go on right there. Do you ever want to quit out of anything because you just didn't feel like you was affected? Mm -hmm. Do you ever think, why am I involved in this? Mm -hmm. I ain't no good. <laughs> I'm going to quit, the Lord said. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. No, ain't. <laughs> okay. Five years down the road, so I'm going to quit, Lord said. No, you ain't. Okay. Hello? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think you like that, doesn't it, Brother Dan? Yeah. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Nobody is me. Nobody is me. That's right. I feel a little back to you. I'm, 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 I'm coming to a close here, I feel like. But if you go back to the please again.
students shall stand with him. Hmm. And three cold, two, yeah, three fold cord is not quickly broken. One strand of cord will be broke pretty easy. But if you take that twine and you twine, string it together, me and Brother Thomas together couldn't break it. Nice and strong. That's right. But if you're standing by yourself, it's a lot easier to get knocked off your feet. That's right. But when you stand with strength, when you stand in confidence, how do I get that confidence? We've got to turn our heart to the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's taught us. Every day he's taught us to come to him. He's taught us to turn away from the the wiles of this world, the wickedness thereof. Yeah. And he's calling us to come to him. But I'm strong. Yeah. I used to be too. I thought. Well enough, Brother Co. Maybe grab a good old tree. Then you say, boy. No, break your back now. I grabbed them big old 16 foot six by sixes. Pivot on this right on my shoulder and take off off them little thing. Bring them to a hole almost four foot deep. Stand them up, saddle. You ain't gonna do that being a wimp. <coughs> but when I come before the Lord, I cry like a baby. Because I'm at a power that is so much stronger than I ever was. Amen. That's right. I might can move a big log, but he can move the world. Amen. That's right. Amen. If you move sin out of my life one day, I came to an altar and I knelt before him and I asked him to forgive me of my sin and he moved all that sin out of my life. Nobody else can do that. Amen. I couldn't do that. It was still there. I was still fighting with it every day. Right. But he moved that sin out of my way. He gave me a free path. He gave me a clear path to him. Yeah. Yeah. Moved that old black sin out of my way. That old nastiness, that filth. And all of a sudden, I started seeing a light that I'd never seen before. That's right. Yeah. All of a sudden now, I, you know, I'm just a baby. I don't need to have strength. I'm going, I'm going to let my daddy take care of me. Amen. That's I'm right. going to let him take care of this. That's right. Hallelujah. I don't have to be strong, but see. That's right. I don't have to be strong because he's strong. He's all I need. Amen. He's all I need. Amen. He's the only way I can be saved. It don't matter how strong I am, how much money I have, how much how much influence? It don't matter about that junk. It ain't helping me. Bible says, what is it if a man gain the whole world? Yeah, lose his own soul. Lose soul. What is he profit? And, and you're going to lose your own soul if you don't turn it to him. That's right. If you don't turn your life to the Lord, you don't have in you what it takes to make it. That's right. Oh, I got my staff thinking about that, do you? No. I just buried a 23-year-old man a few weeks ago, my neighbor. He thought he had plenty of time, too, went deer hunting that morning. Had an animal attack and died. Wow. 23 years. I sure he thought, man, I, I, I would be 70, 80 years old. We buried him at 23. Skinny wow. little fella. Looked healthy. Asthma attack. 
What? Yeah. You know why? Because the Lord said, come home, son. Yeah. It was his time to go home. Yeah. When it's your time to go, there ain't nothing stopping you. That's right. Your age, your health, That's right. it don't matter. Nothing. I don't know if I told you, I had a best friend when I was in uh, fourth or fifth grade. Fifth grade, I think it was. Me and him were best friends. Always swapping stuff out and doing this and doing that. Well, back then, it was, he was, we went to a Christian school up in Nashville. He had one of them big calculator watches. Man, that thing was tough, man. He had a calculator on his arm. He was also told time. My buddy Stephen, I said, man, that's just cool. He said, you know what? I'll let you borrow it. You can take it home this weekend. Really? Yeah. I took it home. Boy, that watch. I come back to school on Monday morning. Everybody was sad. People was crying. I said, what's going on? They said, Stephen and his brother died in the house fire this weekend. Wow. My best friend was gone. Fifth grade, what does that make me? About 12, 13?
in the spirit. You have to have the breath go, because the breath is the spirit. You'll receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. What does that mean? That means you'll speak a language you never spoke before. You speak a language that you didn't learn in school. That's right. It's a heavenly language. Well, I can't understand it. What good is it doing? It's your evidence that the Spirit of the Lord is in you because you didn't do it. You didn't do it. Loneliness. Solitude. It's a sad thing. So when you come to the Lord, you ain't no longer alone. You got Him, and you got every child of God that has done the same thing. So if you've repented and been baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost. Now you're not alone. Now you're part of the family. Now you're part of the body. That's right. Believers. Yes. That's why, folks, even those in here that have already been through all that, you might have had the Holy Ghost for years. Let me remind you that just because you may not be doing everything you can right now for the Lord, don't mean that you don't have a place in the body. Amen. Because there's one body, but there's a lot of members. And there ain't nobody going to tell any one piece of that body that we don't need you anymore. That's right. Amen. You have a purpose. Yeah. You have a design. That's right. You are part of the body. The body, body needs you. You're how the body functions. That's right. Hello? Don't matter how old, how young. Don't matter how crippled up we are, we still got a function. We still got a place. We still got a need. The body still needs us. It Amen. desires us. It needs us to function like it should. Yes, sir. Amen. The sadness or solitude. But I'm here today to tell you that it don't have to be. Stand with me. It don't have to be. You don't have to be sad anymore. You don't have to be alone anymore. That's right. You don't have to just try to make this walk on your own. Because right here is your family. Right here is your friend. Right here is the body of believers that'll pray with you, that'll love you, that'll support you, that'll get behind you. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. You don't have the Holy Ghost today, I want. I'm going to charge you to just let the Lord do what He wants to do in your life. Amen. It all starts with the prayers. When you finally have enough, I know that's what I've done. I finally had enough. I said, I can't do this no more. I'm tired of being sad. I'm tired of being alone. I'm tired of being out. It's time for a change. Right. It's time for a reckoning. And I came to the Lord, and now I got a family. Now I got help. The Lord brought me to my help needs. Yes. Hello? Let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord right now. If you need anything, just, he's here today. It's all to know, but if you want to come pray, we'll pray with you. Thank Lord, we love you this morning. Thank you. We're thankful, Lord, for your mercy. We're thankful, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord. We ask the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just touch our hearts right now, Lord God. Just open us up, Lord. Let us, let us see if there's anything that we need to change. Lord, if, if we need to come before you, Lord God, and tell of our sins or whatever it is that we need to do. If we need to come before you, Lord God, and ask for help, ask for help in a situation, a problem that we've been facing, whatever it may be, Lord, we're not here to judge, we're not here to be judged. Lord, we're just here to let you work, let you move, 
that you got the rent, that you be the God that you want to be in our lives. Lord, you said this world, that this world is but a vapor. This life is but a vapor. We're only here for a short time. Lord, I want that short time to be sure. I want to make my call in an election sure, Lord. I want to know when I close my eyes in death and I'm going to open them looking at you. I don't want to have a hope so salvation, Lord. I want to know so salvation. I want to know without a doubt, Lord, that I'm where I need to be. I want to know without a doubt, Lord, that I have made my provision so I can make that trip with you on that. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship. 